Pitaya, Dabutikaba, Rambutan, Durian. What do you think I'm talking about? Try to take a guess, and I'll mention what these are shortly. But first, let's talk about the world of babies. For example, think of a baby. When they see a new person, they carefully focus on them for many seconds. Or when they see the rain for the first time, they'll glance with excitement and astonishment. They're actually amazed with anything they see. Imagine you wake up one day, and all your memory is completely erased. You're like a newborn baby again. Like a baby, you'd be astonished by everything. Imagine seeing snowflakes for the first time. You'd get excited and probably look up at the sky and think, where are these flakes coming from? Or when you looked up at the sky and saw fluffy clouds, you'd wonder how they just float there by themselves. You'd live with the thrill of discovering new things. So the main question is this, why is it that we don't feel any sense of amazement when we're currently going through these events? For example, why are we not astonished by the fact that rain is filtering down such fluffy clouds? Or a human made up of flesh having dozens of emotions, laughing, crying, getting excited. Why don't these amaze us? Ultimately, you're made out of substances, right? Why do you laugh? Why do you feel emotions? You're just matter. This means there is a soul that exists beyond this matter, and that's how we can feel these feelings. So why don't these thoughts astonish us? These are those of you that might say, what's wrong with this? We learn how these events occur, and therefore there's no need to be amazed anymore. But do we really learn, or do we just get used to it? Indeed, this is not in fact learning. It is growing accustomed to things, and it's the first thing that lets us forget about God in our daily life. Habit. This is the most dangerous situation for those who seek evidence for the existence of God and for those who want to know Him, and one of the several reasons why atheists are atheists. You know that thing your atheist friend mentions all the time? I'm looking for a creator, but I can't find him anywhere? This is the reason. Because of our customary environment and seeing the same habitual events, we tend to say, even though the world is filled with so much proof, hence why we need to recognize this disease called habit and find a cure. Not just our atheist friends, but we too as Muslims need to cure ourselves from this disease so we can get to know our Creator better. Now let's come back to those strange names from the beginning of the video. Some of you might have guessed already. These are the names of fruits. For example, Pitaya is also known as dragon fruit. It can be found in abundance in Thailand and Indonesia, and it is sometimes called strawberry pear. Another fruit is jabuticaba. Interestingly, this fruit grows directly from the trunk of the tree. In fact, many people use it as a decorative plant in their homes. Another interesting fruit is the rambutan. Due to the hair covering its skin, it resembles a unique living creature. Its flesh is pale, yellow in color, and not easy to bite into. Another one is the forbidden fruit. Durian. It's known as the king of fruit. We can call it the forbidden fruit because due to its very bad smell, it's forbidden in hotels and planes. Even though first-timers don't like it in the beginning, later on they can't get enough of its delicious taste. We have one more interesting fruit. The apple. You might say, this is just a typical apple. But the real question is, just as we were amazed by the other four fruits, why don't we feel the same amazement with the apple? Just as we are amazed by the jabuticaba fruit growing from the trunk of a tree, why aren't we amazed with one growing out of a branch? Ultimately, are they both not made from wood? And again, why aren't we amazed by the dark, tasteless, unscented, colorless, and senseless soil which produces unique colors, unique tastes, some being sour, some sweet? Doesn't it amuse you that a juicy, delicious apple grows from this? The actual problem is this. We always see the apple and now we are accustomed to it. And when we get used to it, millions of miracles and proofs are passed from our sight and the evidence is incomprehensible. Whereas if you think about it, colors grow out of complete darkness. Out of the black earth grows a brown tree and from that a green leaf and then a red apple. In actuality, there is a creation that draws attention to great detail. But if you had never seen an apple before, then the apple would amaze you. In reality, God introduces himself through the miracle of his creations. Those who adjust themselves from habit are able to see this. A second reason that prevents us from being astonished is thinking, I already know. If someone says this, that means they are no longer deeply mindful of the matter. The assumption of knowledge is the biggest obstacle that stands in the way of truth, even when facing something miraculous. When you say, I already know, that means you're not even thoroughly looking anymore. For example, think about an apple tree bearing melons. Wouldn't you be amazed? Or if a bee made jam? We'd be so astonished that we'd publicize it on the news. We'd be astonished, just like a baby. So why aren't we amazed when an apple tree makes an apple? Or when a bee makes honey? Why can't we perceive this as a miracle? This is normal. We know that an apple tree makes apples. It happens all the time. Or the bees fly around some flowers and produce honey. This is how it's done. Is saying all of these things learning, watching, or adapting? Or think about it. If every time you rubbed your hands together, an orange appeared, 
Would this be a miracle? If this happened every day, you wouldn't be amazed anymore. You'd say, this is normal. If someone asked you, so how does this happen? And you reply, we just rub our hands together and an orange comes out. So would this be learning or would it be adjustment and habit? Of course, it'd be a habit. What's the difference between an orange coming out of your hand and an orange that has been prepackaged, given color and scent which comes out of a piece of wood? Isn't that also an astounding miracle? When asked how, and the answer is, we have learned. It just comes out of the wood. This isn't learning, it's habitual. Just think, even the toys they put in chocolate eggs. We are certain that there is someone who places them inside. Then how can we forget that there is a God who repetitively sustains adorable yet living chicks inside the eggs? God made his creation so that we may look and reflect upon them. How can we relate this to materials, coincidence, and atoms? On top of that, we say, we have learned. This is our formula. We must ask, the events and objects that we consider ourselves competent in, do they have capability or talent? Do they have knowledge, will, power, or life? We must recognize they don't have any capabilities and go from there. Lastly, there's one more obstacle that prevents us from noticing miracles, naming. When we put names and titles to our every affair, it's like we solve them for ourselves and fail to remember God among these events. In fact, the names of all the events that occur in the universe are just in the manner God operates this universe. This is called Adatullah. For example, the way the raindrops fall one by one, or the way we see the clouds water the earth. This has been named the water cycle. It feels like now that we name this process water cycle, we've solved it, and we don't need to think or reflect on this any longer. But in reality, we need to think beyond the name we've given it. How and why does this cycle occur? How does a drop of water turn into condensation? Conveniently, it turns into a cloud that's ready to carry water everywhere easily. It can then turn from a cloud and form into water droplets. Well, who is behind all this craftsmanship? Every second who controls and has the tendency to decide 16 million droplets hitting the ground every second? Who gathers the mindless, senseless clouds and pushes them in the direction they need to go? Who evaporates the water changing its form and turns it into a fluffy cloud and floats it in the sky? Who compresses the fluffy cloud like a sponge then sends it to earth with utmost mercy? Who evaporates the water changing its form and floats it like a fluffy cloud in the sky? Who is the one who holds the clouds in the sky and sends down the rain with utmost mercy? Who makes the rain fall down in single droplets? Who divides the water within seven millimeter droplets? Who gently slows them as they fall from the sky? Is it the atoms who have no knowledge, will, or choice, not even mercy or life? Or is it the clouds or the water itself who's doing all this work, all this miraculous cycle? Using names like the water cycle, we shouldn't limit our stream of thoughts. God's existence is evident in every detail, just like the sun. Let's not forget that these names just show us how God controls the universe, how he controls the atoms. If we can discard ourselves of these habits, the assumption that we know everything, and avoid drowning in the names that we've given things, we can easily find God everywhere. Yes, there is the creator who sees and takes measure of everything behind the scenes, who possesses knowledge, will, power, and life. It takes great wisdom to have proficiency, Objects don't possess proficiency or knowledge. That means that God is the one that controls these matters and sees everything. Now that we've discarded our habitual views, let's reflect on the following. For example, the rain, the wind, a plum, or a rainbow, a rabbit, the gigantic planets, or the smell of coffee, the universe is full of signs for you to find and remember God. We'd like to end our video with a quote from Ali radiallahu anhu. The darkness cannot be a veil for a seeing eye. The light is futile for an eye unwilling to see. Hello brothers and sisters and thank you for watching the video. If you want to take a look at more of our videos like this, you can check the playlists we created specifically for you on the right or you can check out our latest videos on the left. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can reach and benefit more people. See you.